Hello everyone, my name is Halsey. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson from the Kojak Legacy Edition where we give an overview of the lessons. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. This is the first lesson of our winter quarter. All the lessons in Unit 1 is focusing on God sends Jesus Bible scriptures for today, Sunday, December 3rd is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through verses 40. Lesson title is Jesus's birth predicted. Before we go into our lesson, we will have prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are able to do all things. Thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible for you. Now, Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, to cast all our burdens, cast all our cares upon you because you care about us. You care about what happens to us. You care about our well-beings. And we say thank you. Bless every listening ears. Cause hearts to receive. And we say thank you. Bless every teachers as always. Give understanding. Give encouragement. Give strength. And we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings and all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This lesson is outlined and it is divided into two sections. Section one will deal with Mary hears the message. And that's verses 26 through verses 38. Section two will deal with Mary visited Elizabeth. And that's verses 39 through verses 40. The aim for this lesson is that we reviewed uh, the foretelling of Jesus' birth, that we reflect on the unexpected and perplexing events of our lives, and that we dedicate our lives to the purposes of God. Memory verse of this lesson is, And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And so, uh, we learn earlier in this chapter that the same angel, Gabriel, uh, visited uh, Mary. That, that's the same angel that visited uh, Zechariah. And Zechariah was a priest a descendant of Aaron, and these families were divided into uh, 24 groups who would rotate their weekly service in the temple. And one of those uh, priests was Zechariah, who was married to Elizabeth. They were both known for their godly lives. I'm sorry. They were also well advance in age. They never have any uh, children. And in, in those days, not having children would, was kind of a social embarrassment. However, one day, while Zachariah uh, was in the temple offering up incense to the Lord, the angel Gabriel appears to him and announced uh, to him that his wife Elizabeth will have a child. And Zachariah, of course, by sight, immediately responded in doubt if that could really happen, which is understandable from a man's perspective. But with God, all things are possible if we only believe. And so as a result of his doubt, the Lord muted his speech. He was muted until the prophecy was fulfilled. And as was predicted, Elizabeth was conceived and had a, a baby uh, named John, who is known as a John the Baptist. And this uh, baby John, he would grow up to be the forerunner uh, for Jesus' ministry. Now, later on, this same uh, angel Gabriel 
uh, delivers even a more miraculous announcement uh, to Mary. And Mary was, she was a, a unmarried a virgin girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. And the angel uh, Gabriel announced to Mary her miraculous uh, news also. He, he refers to uh, Mary as highly favored. Mary was a recipient of God's grace. Mary uh, would carry uh, the Son of God, the long-awaited Messiah, Jesus Christ. And this would fulfill uh, the prophecy spoken by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 9, around verse 6 and 7. We will now go to section 1. It will deal with Mary hears the message. And that's verse uh, 26 to verse 38. Start reading at verse 26. Reading from King James Version, verse 26. And in the sixth month of the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And so after the angel Gabriel uh, went to see Zechariah, now he's going to appear uh, to young Mary. And it says he, he was sent from God with this very, very important uh, message. The story of Mary and Joseph, it begins uh, in the region of Galilee in a small town called Nazareth. You know, Nazareth was a despised city and it was considered uh, inferior by the rest of uh, the Israelites, those who were around them. They consider uh, whoever came from that city as a nobody. And later on, they even uh, go after Jesus with that. But God uh, is able, and he can do whatever he wants to do. He can choose from wherever he wants to. God doesn't look at uh, people the way people looks at people. Because as we uh, will see how uh, the Lord used this poor young virgin girl to be the mother of his son, Jesus. Verse 27, to a virgin espoused to a man whose a name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And in this verse here, we see how it established uh, the facts about uh, Jesus's conception and birth according to prophecy. In Isaiah uh, chapter 7 and verse 13, it says, Then Isaiah said, Listen well, you royal family of David. You aren't satisfied to exhaust my patient. You exhaust the patient of God as well. 14. All right then. The Lord himself will choose the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. That was according to a prophecy that Jesus would be born to a virgin, a girl. And this I would keep Jesus free from inheriting original sin uh, from Adam. Adam's sin and everyone that was born became a sin because of Adam. This one right here is not of Adam. And this promise a Messiah would also be uh, from the family, the descendant of David. That was also prophes prophesied by uh, the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah uh, chapter 9 and uh, verse 6, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders. These will be his royal title. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So we see here how uh, Jesus' coming was announced throughout prophecies. Back to the lesson, verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed 
art thou among women? And again, uh, when we think about uh, Mary and where she was from, Mary was a poor young girl in a place that was again considered unfit, no good, nothing good could, could ever come out of Nazareth. And so uh, look at God, only God. God sees us uh, differently from how we see uh, each other. God made this choice to choose uh, this girl and, and all the characteristics that she represents that people would uh, see her as uh, no good, no fit for such a major task. But God chose her for this very important uh, task. And this here would take a great act of obedience. You know, sometimes uh, when uh, we get overlooked for a certain assignment, we may get upset, but not all assignments uh, can be carried out by everyone. Mary right here will have to walk in complete obedience to the Lord. Mary was a young girl. She would ha her life right here will change forever. Mary, uh, she knew that she was favored. Mary was also very knowledgeable in the word because later on uh, in her uh, song, she uh, praised uh, the Lord for favoring her. Mary, uh, she acknowledged the fact that uh, she was just a vessel that God chose and used. And you know, we too, like Mary, we too should acknowledge the Lord for whatever he uh, placed in our hands uh, to, to do. We too should acknowledge that we are just a vessel that the Lord is using to accomplish his purpose. Verse 29, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And we see here how Mary was troubled. She was confused. While she's willing and she's faithful, there's a sense of an easement. And that's what happened. When the angel of the Lord, when God's uh, angel showed up, that presence, it usually uh, invoked some kind of instinctive fear or an easement to those uh, they visited. Verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And, and here, uh, Gabriel, the angel, he reassured uh, Mary. He addressed uh, Mary's uh, fear. Gabriel, uh, he, he gave Mary assurance that God's presence uh, wa was with her and what was expected of her. Mary uh, would know that uh, she would, now she would know that she would be carrying the Son of God and his name should be called uh, Jesus. And this here, uh, this was no uh, small task. Mary uh, was favored uh, by God, but that didn't mean it would bring her instant success. No, becoming the mother of the Messiah would lead to much pain. First of all, the people in her community would ridicule her. Her fiancé uh, would almost get to a point of dumping her off. So she I would have to go through a whole lot. And that's why she needed that uh, encouragement that the Lord is with you. And Mary's uh, pain 
would even continue even until uh, Jesus went to the cross. Because Jesus, uh, he came uh, into this world, this dark dying world to give life, to bring salvation. And Mary, a pain would be a part of uh, that plan, a part of God's plan. When, you know, when we are weighed down by sorrows and pains, we can remember right here, young Mary, and, and, and wait uh, for God to finish the good work that he started in us. And this uh, was a, a task that Mary had to see through the end. And you know, same thing is true for us. And the Apostle Paul touched on this a little bit uh, in uh, Philippians chapter 1 and verse uh, 6, when he says, And I am sure that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on that day when Christ Jesus comes back again. And, and again, we, we also have to see ourselves in these uh, projects or these assignments when we feel like we're not making any progress. Whatever the Lord starts in us, whatever he puts in our hands, he will complete it. God will give the grace and the strength that it needs to be completed, just like he'll give it to Mary, because Mary's going to need it. Back to the lesson, verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David 33 and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end and we are, again we continue to see uh, God's promises uh, continues uh, to unfold centuries ago God had promised David that David's kingdom would last forever. That's in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7 and verse 16. And that promise that was given then, this promise uh, would fulfill in the coming of Jesus. And, and that would be that direct descendant of David whose reign would continue through eternity, through Christ. And this again is another confirmation that we can trust God's a word. We can trust his word. This was given centuries ago. But here we're seeing it coming to fulfillment. When the Lord says it, he will do it. He may not come when we want him to come. But if he said it, we can trust that he will do it. Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I knew not a man? And here Mary, I wanted to know, how can this be? The angel uh, Gabriel, he will explain it later, that uh, this child, Jesus Christ, will be conceived through a miracle of the Holy Spirit. And this will make him truly the Son of God, free from all inherited sin nature of Adam. And that's what Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, where he said, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because of sin. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, he is sinless. He is the son of the living God. Back to the lesson, verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. There you have it. No. Uh, Mary was perplexed and she was confused 
about this news then. And same is true for where we are today. People are still are perplexed and confused over uh, the virgin birth of uh, Jesus Christ. But as believers, we should make up in our minds to believe that this God of this universe has all power and that he is able to create a child in a virgin womb. We should make up in our minds to believe that. We should make up in our minds uh, to believe that Jesus Christ was born without sin. He was born holy. Just like uh, Adam, Adam was created sinless. Adam is the one who disobeyed God and became sinful. But in contrast, Jesus a Christ obeyed. Jesus obeyed God and was able to face uh, the sin consequences in our place and uh, to make us acceptable to a holy God. Verse 36, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. And so to further a reassured Mary, the angel Gabriel, he also tells her about the good news he recently delivered uh, to her relative Elizabeth because Elizabeth and her husband Zachariah, their lives would also be changed dramatically. They uh, were old and Elizabeth uh, she was barren, so this would be a miracle for them also. Verse 37, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And this little statement right here, you know, it beautifully sums up the hope brought uh, by faith in God. Our faith in God is, is very very important we see a changed lives we see transformed uh, lives we see uh, victories in hard places we see power to overcome our sins and even uh, this salvation that we have all of these were made possible only by the relationship that we have in Jesus Christ. Everything that we have, it comes from the Lord by faith. You know, God so loved this world. John 3 and verse 16. It lets us know how much God so loved this world that he gave up his only son. For whom? For us. And even uh, when we take a look at uh, Hebrews chapter 5 and start looking at uh, verse verse 8, when it says, so even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. For nothing with God shall be impossible. God is doing it. He's doing all of this. Everything that we receive, it cometh from the Lord. Back to the lesson, verse 38. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. You know, uh, Mary right here was in a, a place where she could be looked upon as being crazy. With her story about becoming pregnant by the Holy Spirit, the people around her could have looked upon her as being crazy. But still, Mary said, despite the possible risk of being called crazy, Mary submitted according to thy word. Mary didn't even... I know 
all of what was up ahead. However, she was willing to obey and to serve the Lord. And you know, we should follow uh, Mary's examples. We should not wait to know what the end will be or the bottom line will be before uh, we offer up our uh, lives or our service to the Lord. The Lord is looking for a people who will offer up themselves willingly, even when the outcome seems disastrous. Because again, his words reminds us that for with God, nothing shall be impossible. He is able to turn things around and cause it to work together for the good, for his good, for his purpose. We will now go to section two. It will deal with Mary visited Elizabeth. Verse 39, and Mary arose those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. 40, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. A part of uh, Gabriel's uh, message to Mary was also about Elizabeth's uh, pregnancy. And at this point, uh, Elizabeth is uh, over uh, six months uh, pregnant. And so Mary went in haste. And this also speak of volumes of Mary, the excitement that she had uh, going to see her uh, relative in haste. And, you know, we uh, could ask our, ourselves uh, this question. How excited are you when the Lord is blessing your relatives or your friends, even someone you know? Does that make you get excited? You know, it, it getting excited for someone else, it serves as an encouragement. You, we encourage them and we are encouraged by them because if God is a blessing them, we know that he's still in the blessing business. And we see here uh, when Mary arrives, the child in Elizabeth's womb reacted to the presence of the Messiah that Mary was carrying. The power and the presence of Jesus Christ, even when he was in the womb. My God. And his name I shall be called Jesus, meaning the Lord saves. So as we close, what would be some lessons that we can take away from Mary's a story? Well, uh, for one, uh, Mary... She surrendered uh, to God's will. We saw a trustful surrendering uh, to God's will. Remember, uh, Mary was a young girl, but she showed that trustful uh, surrendering uh, to the will of God. And we too, we are also called to respond to uh, God's invitation uh, to say yes. And just like uh, Mary did, uh, in saying yes, it will help us to discover the path that God has in front of us. We also saw that God's prophecy is sure to come to pass. Remember, uh, the Jews, they had been waiting for this uh, long-awaited Messiah to come because many prophecies had been made about uh, the coming redeemer of the world. And when the, the time ha had come to fulfill uh, the prophecy, God did not fail his people. We can trust and depend on God's word that if he said it, he's going to do it. We also uh, can tell that uh, Mary had an in-depth knowledge and understanding of God because later on, she recorded a song of praising the Lord and every single phrase of that song was inspired by knowing the Old Testament. We also saw humility. After uh, Mary learned about uh, her relative Elizabeth, she hurried 
to go and to see her. And I'm sure uh, she helped her uh, because Elizabeth was in advanced age. So I'm sure she helped her uh, to prepare uh, for the birth of uh, her son. And Mary, uh, she did not see herself as being important and being chosen. Instead, she humbled herself and gave the Lord praise. Humility. We also uh, see that following the Lord does not always mean a life of comfort. It does not mean that we will be physically prosperous and wealthy. In fact, uh, Jesus himself said that we must endure until the end to be saved. And uh, that's Matthew uh, 24 and verse 13. So uh, as we go through this week, let us have an aim. Let us have an aim to say yes to the Lord, like Mary. You know, God has given us a guideline to follow him, a guideline that accurately represent him. And we should be mindful of this guideline. We uh, should have this aim to be this light. So somebody will see something that will cause them to come. Mary was a light to her surrounding uh, community. Mary became a light to uh, the women. She became a light to and an example to those she was around and we should have that same aim to be a light in this dark and dying world to point them uh, to jesus christ so they too can receive a salvation and eternal life and this will conclude our lesson if you have heard something that was helpful to you please give a thumbs up share subscribe or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.